Hey guys, today we're tying the Slump Buster. This is a streamer pattern originally tied by John Barr. And it's an awesome heavy fly that gets down fast, moves a lot of water, and gets the attention of fish. So we're tying this on a size 6 B10S stinger hook. It's a, one of my favorite big streamer hooks, super sharp. And I've got a medium sized tungsten cone head on it. So I begin my reps just behind the cone head and I'm going to make thread reps all the way back to the bend of the hook. And once I get back to the bend of the hook, I will go ahead and tie in my copper wire. So this is just small copper wire and we're going to be using this wire to add a little bit of durability to the pine squirrels onker strips. You won't actually be able to see it once it's finished, but it'll just help hold everything together. So once I've got that wire tied in, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my zonker strips. I'm using black pine squirrel for this one. I also tie this fly in brown or natural and olive as well. So this first piece of zonker is actually gonna make both the tail of the fly and the the spine or the mohawk of the fly. So I'm gonna measure it out to be about two hook shanks in length. And then I can always trim up later, which I'll do for this fly to get the measurements exact, but to get it pretty close, measure about two hook shanks, and then I'm gonna separate the fur to use as a tie-in point. It helps if you lick your fingers to get that for to kind of hold in place. And after making a few securing wraps, pull it out of the way. Now I'm tying in just a little bit of silver tinsel. This is gonna be used to add some body to the fly and just as a little bit of flash. For the most part, you won't be able to see it when the fly is moving because the fur will be covering up, but if for some reason the fish do get a glimpse of it, I don't think it hurts. And I'll wrap it all the way up to the tungsten cone head. And go ahead and secure it off and clip off the excess. Now I'm going to lay the remaining zonker strip back across the spine of the body of the fly. And I'm going to measure to where it just overlaps the back of the cone head. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it off there. What this will do is give me just a little bit of excess leather strip from that zonker. And I'm going to pull off some of the fibers right at the front of the zonker strip. So I'll have the exposed leather. And then I can slide that exposed leather underneath the cone head. and tie it off there. This will give a really clean uh, back to the fly. It makes a nice mohawk. And now I'm going to begin wrapping that copper wire back up the fly. This is just ribbing for it essentially and helps to ensure that if the strip were to get nicked by some fish teeth uh, it wouldn't come completely loose from the, the hook. So just take your time working it through so you don't push too many fibers down as you wrap this wire through. And you should have a good mohawk when you're finished. Once I've got my wire back up to the cone head, I'll go ahead and tie it off and helicopter that wire off. And 
And now I'm ready to tie in the collar of this fly. So the collar again is gonna be spine, pine squirrel's honker. And same thing, I'm gonna pull off some of the fibers from the front to have a little piece of exposed leather. And I'm gonna slide that exposed leather into the cone head from the side. And I'm kind of angling it uh, down a little bit. And what that'll do is, once I cinch it down and tie it down, as I begin to wrap, that'll allow that leather piece to face down. I don't want it to face up. So as long as it faces down, that makes sure that as I wrap, you can see these fibers are sort of pointing back. I don't want them to be splayed forward. And I can make about two wraps, two and a half wraps, get a nice thick collar. This is what's gonna help push that water and really grab the attention of the fish. Once I've got about two and a half wraps, go ahead and secure this off with three tight wraps and I'll go ahead and clip off the excess. And from here, I can go ahead and whip finish behind the cone head. I'll make a couple whip finishes. Two, three, or four turn whip finishes will hold that in really well. And we can cut our thread off here. So now we're just gonna trim up this fly a little bit, get it to the right size. And it always helps to, uh, to lick your fingers to get this fur to lay the way you want it to. But I'm basically just sizing the tail here. I want that tail to be about the length of the hook. I don't like the tail too long on slump busters. So I'll go ahead and trim off just a little bit of excess. And I like that, I think that looks pretty good. And the last thing I'm gonna do, this isn't required, but I don't like the tungsten cone head to be all free and willy nilly. So I'm gonna tie just a little bit of a thread bump right in front of it, between the cone head and the eye of the hook. And what this does is just help force that cone head back and push into the collar of the fly a little bit and keeps everything really tight and snug. And again, I'll, I'll do a two whip finishes just to finish off that bump. And at this point, our slump buster is done. So let's see how it fishes. fish coming up top. I was throwing a wood burger earlier, pretty shallow, and uh, didn't see any follows, so I'm just going to assume the fish are deeper, and we're going to go with that. So. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at that, tiger muskie. Now this is on 7X tippet, I'm sorry, not 7X, seven pound tippet, 4X, seven and a half pound 
Um, wasn't fishing for a tiger, but hey, sometimes that happens, so it's pretty cool. Alright, he's on the reel. Honestly surprised he hasn't bit through that tippet because you usually have to fish for muskie and pike with a wire leader, wire leader or some heavy mono, but oh. <sighs> my net's not really big enough. This should be fun. Oh, holy moly. Look at that guy. So, got him out. And off he goes. 